In this video, we explore 12 essential facts about grenades that you should know. From their history to how they work, we cover everything you need to be informed about these powerful explosive devices. Stay tuned to learn more about the fascinating world of grenades. Hand grenades have been an essential part of combat since time immemorial, and have played a very important role in modern warfare. They are extremely lethal weapons that give their users a tactical advantage over their enemies, making them think twice before advancing. However, you should know that the world of grenades is quite extensive, with a lot of historical information, many technical details and numerous myths surrounding this powerful tactical weapon. In this video you will learn some very important and interesting facts. Get comfortable and prepare to discover two incredible facts you should know about grenades. Grenades have existed for thousands of years and have evolved over time. The earliest evidence of grenades dates back to between 7 and 17 and 741 AD when the Byzantine Empire used incendiary hand devices. In China, during the Song Dynasty, 960-1279, weapons known as Sen Dian Lei or Thunder That Shakes the Sky were created. These were made by packing gunpowder into ceramic or metal containers to throw at the enemy. Gunpowder reached Europe in 1467 and France was a pioneer in technological advancements of this weapon, having their first units of grenadiers by 1667. From then on the use of grenades spread worldwide, but they were still quite rudimentary until the early 1900s when the development of modern grenades began. At the beginning of World War I, the use of grenades started to gain more significance on all fronts. Years earlier a Belgian engineer began developing the first grenades with a pin or ring mechanism. This engineer was captured by the Germans but his British friend, engineer William News, knew about the project and redesigned it for the British Army. This new grenade called MLS or number 5 was shaped like a pineapple and took only 5 seconds to detonate, sending hundreds of metal fragments in all directions. From then on the world of hand grenades changed forever. The word grenade comes from the Latin grenatum and it was named so by the French due to its resemblance to the shape and size of the red sweet fruit of the same name. In Spanish this explosive is officially known as Granada de Mano, in French Grenada Main, and in English Hand Grenade. Using the main principles and taking the MLS grenade as a model, a range of specialized grenades began to be created. An impressive fact is that during World War II, the United States manufactured a little over 50 million fragmentation grenades. There are approximately 45 types of grenades. Some are still in use while others have become obsolete over time but they are usually divided into five groups. Fragmentation grenades, concussion grenades, anti-tank grenades, stun grenades, and smoke grenades. Fragmentation grenades are the most common type on the battlefield, and their main function is to kill or mutilate nearby enemy troops. They are usually made of hard synthetic material or steel, which provides fragments and shrapnel. Most are designed to be thrown and to detonate after a period of time or on impact. The US MK2 fragmentation grenades have an effective radius of 15 meters, and the fragments can travel up to 200 meters. Concussion grenades on the other hand are designed to harm the target solely with the explosion. In the case of the US M67 grenade, the casualty radius is 2 meters in open areas. Anti-tank grenades were designed for use against armored vehicles and were highly relevant during World War II. Today, due to improvements in tank armor, anti-tank hand grenades are generally considered obsolete. Stun grenades are non-lethal explosive devices used to temporarily disorient an enemy senses. They are designed to produce a blinding flash of light and a loud detonation noise of over 170 decibels. The first to use this technology was the British Army's Special Air Service, also known as SAS, in the 1970s. Smoke grenades simply release a large amount of non-lethal gas into the atmosphere. They have become highly relevant in tactical operations, using different smoke colors for signaling or warnings. For example, green smoke indicates wounded on the ground, and red smoke indicates enemy targets. There are many ways to explain the process of throwing a hand grenade. Here we explain it in six simple steps. First, the operator adopts the throwing position, with feet well apart, holding the grenade with hands at the abdomen and proceeds to remove the pin. Second, the operator holds the lever with their dominant hand so that when the pin is removed, the lever does not fall off and activate the fuse. At this moment, they should know where they will throw it. Third, when the operator throws the grenade, the safety lever flies off the grenade, allowing the spring or striker to fall. Fourth, when the striker falls and hits the percussion cap, the chemical fuse starts burning for about five seconds. Fifth, 
when the chemical fuse burns completely, it activates the detonator and ignites the main charge or explosive material. Sixth, the accumulated energy produces an explosion that sends the grenade fragments flying in all directions at high speed. The tactics used with grenades vary according to their application. For example, in urban warfare, especially in built-up areas, hand grenades are commonly used, and it is usual to throw a grenade or two before entering a room or flanking a staircase. Another key issue is ensuring the grenade cannot be grabbed and thrown back. The preferred technique of US Marines to prevent this is to throw the grenade with enough force for it to bounce and be difficult to grab for a return throw. Additionally, it is important that allies are aware that grenades are being used, so they can move away from the blast radius or take cover. As an alternative, U.S. Army soldiers often give a warning shout immediately after throwing the grenade, such as frag out. Cinema has greatly altered our perception of a hand grenade. What Hollywood depicts as a massive explosion with a gigantic fireball is not how it appears on the battlefield. Generally in movies, a grenade seems more like a super bomb that takes out dozens of enemies. But in real life, a grenade is more like a huge dust cloud that produces almost no fire. There are methods that can increase your chances of surviving an imminent hand grenade detonation. The first thing to understand is that the detonation time is 3 to 5 seconds, which is why running usually doesn't help. If you have a wall nearby, finding cover can help a lot, but if not you should apply the following technique. The first step is to take a large step to gain distance between the grenade and yourself and immediately drop to the ground face down. Your legs should be together, your arms close to your body, your hands covering your ears and your eyes should be closed. Being about 5 meters from the grenade and in this position, the likelihood of being hit by fragments is less than 1%, as very few fragments will fly horizontally along the ground. Moreover, the soles of your shoes protect you from small fragments and in case of a large one your legs can stop it before it reaches a vital area. It is worth noting that this technique only works in open areas, as in a closed space the fragments can bounce off the walls and reach any part of the body. Much is said about how lethal a grenade is underwater. This is an interesting topic that involves many physical and chemical aspects. When the shockwave travels through the air and connects with a living organism, the organism's body reflects most of the force, meaning that the pressure wave hits the body and manages to compress the internal gases. As a result, the victim suffers serious injuries that typically affect the lungs, ears, and, in rare cases, the intestines. In water, however, it is often described as incompressible. This means that in an underwater explosion, the surrounding water does not absorb the pressure like air but moves with it. The result is that while grenade fragments do not pose a real danger, the shockwave does. Regarding the legality of possessing a grenade, in most countries it is not legal for a civilian to own an active grenade. However, in the USA, the situation changes a bit. Hand grenades are classified as destructive devices, which makes it much more complicated for someone to own one, but incredibly, it is not impossible. It depends on several factors, such as the law of the state where you live, filling out the paperwork, passing the exams, and paying $200 to the government for the permit to possess each grenade, in addition to having the proper storage space for it. Another point is that there is practically no one who can legally sell an active grenade to a civilian. The market for these, even in the USA, is scarce. Buying fragmentation or concussion grenades is not easy at all in the USA. However, the situation changes when we talk about smoke and stun grenades. These types of grenades can be possessed with fewer permits, and many companies have modified some aspects to make them less harmful. It should be noted that this only applies in the USA. A stun grenade can cause severe disorientation in a person and, to some extent, seems like a good defensive weapon for the home. Highgay International sells a stun grenade, also known as a flashbang, which is legal for civilians and almost as effective as a military or police one. Police flashbangs usually produce around 175 decibels, while civilian ones produce 125. Tactical grade flashbangs usually have a delay of 1.5 seconds, while civilian versions currently reach 2.5 seconds. Despite all the above, there are people in the world who, for one reason or another, possess an active hand grenade. Weapons in the hands of fools often end in tragedy, and that is the case of Alexander Sanchez. Alexander was a Russian citizen about 28 years old. During a chat conversation with a friend, he was asked if everything was okay. Alexander responded, well, that depends on what you mean by okay. Subsequently, he sent an image of his hand holding a grenade with the pin removed. His friend asked him where he was but Alexander never responded. Apparently he did not put the pin correctly back in the grenade, and it detonated practically 40 centimeters from his body, 
with fatal results. The moral is that weapons in the hands of fools end in tragedy. That's all, I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments which of these weapons is your favorite, and which other 9mm weapons you would include on the list. Don't forget to subscribe and activate the powerful notification bell so you don't miss any new videos.